So I modified this notebook by Lena Kura for fine tuning SD Excel LoRa's on Google Colab, and it'll work in a free Colab. Though you won't be able to realistically train more than a few, or maybe a few hundred or a few thousand images from there. So let's run this one. We can just run all of this, and it'll connect to the GPU. Uh, while we're doing that, let me explain. So let's connect to my Google account here. And this one will basically use the same data set that I used in my 1.5 LoRa, which is images of my cat Mia. And I have it open, I have a link to the data set in open in this window here. So this is my cat. And you see some images here of my cat, and we've got the label here. I have the trigger word as the first one, C M N L R A. And so here, one thing you need to to basically like um, be aware of here is I actually get cloned my repository here, which has images of my cat, and you can feel free to remove this when you run it. But basically, to be honest, this notebook isn't as straightforward as the one for 1.5 LoRa's because, and I purposely left a lot of options open, is it's likely we've not found the most optimal parameters for training these LoRa's yet, even though this has been out for over a year. But this notebook is optimized for use on Google Colab, especially a free instance. So this is a good place to start, to kind of start when you're trying to find a way to train your LoRa. It's like, feel free to go ahead and modify these. These are just, this is just a starting point for you. And before you hit run all like it did, there are definitely several parameters that I'm gonna go over that you definitely want to change before you run it and here's some of them first one while it's still while it's still installing so here's one the path to your training data set directory i have a laura data set that's if you clone get cloned my repository with the data set of images like cat we're going to get this this is this will point to it but you probably want to train on different data set, so please change that. Here, bucketing, latent caching, you can, you if you don't want to like um, flip your images horizontally, you can uncheck flip augmentation, recursive, you may have other images and subfolders as well. Here, th these are the parameters for the type of LoRa. So, this is a default one. I I mainly just play around with this one. I don't know if the other ones were. I haven't even tried it yet. But Laura Lear Lirla. So just keep it there. And then let's see here. Network dimensions and alpha. You probably want. I just go with the default here. 36 and 16. If I have a huge data set, which you're probably going to want to use an A. 104, you might want to change this to 64, this one to 32. Here, just leave these none because we're not training a different type of LoRa under the categories here. And as for optimizer type, I prefer to use the automated, the automatic learning rate finder under the Prodigy algorithm. And these are the default parameters for that. And everything here is set up for Prodigy. But this one uses a bit more VRAM. If you want to use one that doesn't use as much VRAM, you can probably take add a factor and bump up the learning rate to low. I mean, you may want to use a much lower learning rate here, but you want to bump up the batch size to low. And you can, you can hide that. Cell there. Look, this one here. And yeah, I would just stick with Prodigy for now, basically. For this section, the advanced, we can, I would just leave all of these alone here. Training 
a big tier, okay, you would definitely want to name your project something else. And yeah, unless you want to call it test me at one like me. And here, gradient checkpointing, you definitely want to have this on. I found that it's a lot. It uses a you're not gonna be able to train this in a free collab without it. And even in A100, it seems to run much faster with gradient checkpointing. Cache, text, and coder outputs. I would leave this unchecked. For some reason, I've not been able to get it working correctly with that unchecked. Number of epochs. Right now, oh, number of repeats. Um, I tend to, I tend to shy away from repeating data sets. I haven't really found that much of a, an improvement by doing that. I just usually I just go for more epochs. But I mean, if you have a small enough data set, you can bump this number up a bit. Number of epochs. I'm gonna try it with twenty this time. Um, if it's if it's not enough, you can go back and try it with a much much larger number of epochs or a bigger number of repeats. Train batch size. Keep it at one in a free collab. You can probably bump this up to maybe about five or so and then A100. And I would just leave the rest of these alone. Save every end epoch. Usually I I like to save I don't like to save every single epoch, but I like to usually I just keep this at maybe let's say half the number of actual epochs we've got here. And the sample prompt, this is for generating sample images. Under this default configuration, you don't really need a custom prompt. It's just going to pick random labels, random labels you've used for your images and, and display those and just generate images for those. Number of prompt number, this is just the number of images, low RAM, keep that checked. Gradient accumulation steps. I this is kind of basically this is if you multiply this by the batch size you have here, you're gonna get the actual batch size you use. Oh, and here this comes up, this cancel. Yeah, you don't need to restart the session. Anyways, here I'm just gonna use a gradient accumulation of two. This will just barely fit in the 15 gigs of VRAM that Google Colab gets you. And right now it's still, it's just finished installing the requirements. It's downloaded the SDXL model. We can look, look at some of the other models we can train with, like the more popular phony next. But yeah, down, down here it's caching the latents. Keep in mind, this is much slower than the caching process for SD 1.5 LoRa's. And I'm just going to pause the video right now and meet you back once it starts training. All right, so now training has started. And you can see we're just barely holding on with the GPU use here at 14.6 out of 15 gigs. And I think if you don't use gradient accumulation, this might this might use slightly less GPU. So if you run, run ever run out of memory, you might be stuck doing a lower gradient accumulation. I think this might even require a little more to bump this up to three or four, but two two is probably safe. One is definitely safer. And this training is about it is supposed to take about 15 minutes to complete so i'm gonna meet you back here once this is completed all right so we're done with the training now and as you can see even though the loss has actually gone up a bit you can see here i go we went from 0.12 all the way back up to 0.175. Sample images. Let's start from these two are from the 10th epoch. And there's you know, look at this, this. So 
versus this and this. These two look more like my cat. And now we're at this last cell here, which will terminate the runtime with the, after a five minute cooldown. But I'm going to just stop this for now and go back and let's try training a different Laura this time. Let's try, let's try using the, the pony version instead. I uh, just just do that just to demonstrate and see if we can also get it to to do a comparison here. So in order to use pony, you want to go up here and select this one with pony XL V6 diffusers, which I cloned on my hugging face, and then use the pony VAE here. And then we want to run everything after this. Oh, and also we would also want to change the name of the Laura. So let's go back up. And here's the, the option to change the name of the Laura. Test Mia 1. Let's call it Test Mia 1. Pony. Test Mia. Pony. And we will go here and run after. Run this cell in the low. And I'm going to meet you back once the training has finished. Oh, and also while we're waiting for the pony model to train here, we can test out our our, our Laura that we trained using the SPXL base. So I've downloaded that to my downloads folder and we want to copy and want to cut and paste it into my Fable Diffusion Laura folder here. And I'm going to meet you back once I have SPXL Forge loaded. All right, so now we've generated an image of my cat Mia using the Forge platform for, for Stable Diffusion here. And I just use the default weight of one and just the trigger work here. And we've got this image of my cat, Mia, right here. I don't know if the anatomy is perfect, but this is, this is what it'll generate with a simple prompt like that. Now let's see if we can duplicate some of the other training images. Let's look at maybe number 11 here. He's curled up in a ball. I don't know if we have it actually saying he's in a, curled up in a ball. But maybe let's try this one here. Number 9. He's on a blanket. And let's see. Let's take the training prompt here and let's paste that in. And let's run this. This will probably take about a minute or so. My GPU is probably hard at work here because I have only a six six gigabyte GPU here at NVIDIA 2060. And you can see Forge is working pretty hard crunching at this right now. So I'm I'm gonna pause the video and okay, well it's it's coming out right now. <laughs> looks like looks like she's on the on the carpet here, but in this one, the training image here, she's actually on top of on top of a a white carpet, and I think I have that. Yeah, carpet there. It's actually a towel, but I just labeled it as a carpet in the in the training process. So let's see here. This is almost done. Three more seconds. And there we go. She's on top of top of a carpet right here. And she's looking at the viewers just like and she's lying 
He's got whiskers and even doors. So I'm going to meet you back once I'm done training the pony model on Mia. I have no idea how this is going to turn out because I haven't, I've not, I've not tried it with that training full of realistic images on an anime model like that yet. All right, so training has finished for the pony version of my cat, Mia, and I'm not going to show you the two images at Epoch 10 because it might not be exactly safe for work, but here are the two from, from the end, and you get a cartoon version of Mia here, and that's first one, and this is the second one, and in my opinion, we probably could, this could probably use a bit more training, but I would just demonstrate that Pony here works with, with this, with this version of Stable Diffuse with this trainer here. So let's pick the Pony checkpoint and then, all right, so I've been able to generate a sample image of my cat Mia using the the version of the Lord as trained on Pony here. So you can see, I mean, this still resembles her, but I think, in my opinion, the the training could use a bit more more epochs. And just for kicks, I've also decided to try to generate an image with a clip skip of one instead of two here. And I think we probably want to stick with two with Pony here. And I mean, in general, I don't really play around with Pony, but this notebook supports it if you prefer training Laura's based off of that. Anyways, please like and subscribe to this channel if you want more more videos about training various text-to-image models as well as other machine learning concepts. Peace.